Hi, I'm Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol. Today we're going to talk about what God sees when he looks at us. God sees his son's precious blood, which covers us, which cleanses us from all sin. And this is ongoing. It doesn't just stop at salvation. I'm so excited to share with you today. And I thank you for those of you who have subscribed. And if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button. Hit the bell so you can be sure and be alerted of other videos along this subject and many others regarding prayer. If Jesus didn't die for everyone's sin, he would have to keep dying for them on a regular basis. When Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is finished, it was for our sins that we have committed and our sins in the future. It was a one-time deal. Jesus died for our sins. And one of the reasons that we can be assured of this is because of all the scripture that God talks to us about the subject of grace. That we are under that phenomenal grace that God gives us. Well, that doesn't mean that we go out and we can do anything that we want and, and sin and well, it doesn't really matter because God forgives me anyway. That's not the subject. That's not the issue. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm telling you that when God looks at you, because of his grace, he sees Christ's blood and that you have been cleansed. You have been made pure because of his blood and it is ongoing. And we can rest in that assurance that God loves us so much and to keep us under that covering of his precious blood. So how do we increase in grace? How do we increase in God's favor? Grace and favor are interchangeable, as I said in the original text. So when you are reading about grace, put God's favor in those passages and see if it, you will relate to it on a different way. The key, when it says that we are to believe that God's grace covers us, the key is in the word belief. Because when we believe it, it becomes ours. No one can take it away from us. We get that word from here and where we read and look at the scripture deep into our heart and it becomes part and parcel to us. It makes us who we are in Christ because of our understanding that we walk in God's grace, that we walk in his favor, that he has cleansed us from sin. And so when the enemy would try to throw some of these things in our faces, no, just a minute here. The word tells me I walk in grace and favor. The key here, as it is with anything that I teach or anything that you learn, anything that you study, is that the key is in believing. Because if we just say it and we don't get it into our hearts or we don't believe it or we doubt it or we question it, it's not going to make a difference in our lives. People say, well, I prayed that you know, that prayer, or I, I, I prayed those verses and it didn't work. Well, did you believe it? Probably not, or you questioned it. But when you repeat it and get it into your heart and understand that you are in God's favor, that he does cleanse and continually cleanses you from all sin, that you are righteous, that you can come to him boldly because of that and that alone, because of who you are in Christ then that changes your attitude. And if you don't believe it, guess what? You can't grow in it. Believe God for growth in grace. God's grace is always there. Thank him for it. And especially when you mess up. I thank God that your grace is sufficient. 
that your grace has covered my sins. I thank you for that. I thank you that it is not what I do. It is what you have already done for me. And that's where our prayer of thanksgiving is so important. Thanking God for what he has already done for us. Ephesians, the second chapter, the eighth and ninth verses says, For by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. Now, for example, we can tell people, well, I know I'm in God's grace because I read my Bible every day for an hour this week. I know I'm in God's grace because I prayed that extra half an hour every day in the morning and at night. I know I'm in God's grace because I have done so many good things this week for him. No, it is not what we can boast about that we have done. It is grace. It is a gift from God. We don't have to boast about it. We just have to learn how to thank God for it and that we are walking and can walk in God's grace, not by our own merit, but because of what Christ did for us. We will never be holy enough no matter what we try to do. Only God's holiness and God's favor and God's blessing is a gift from him. Learn how to receive it, accept it, believe it, walk in it, and you'll see your life change. I saw my life change. I've seen many people's lives changed when they get the understanding that they don't have to beg and plead and, and cry and ask for forgiveness, but to understand that God has forgiven us, that God loves us, that he cares for us, that he wants us to, yes, follow him and to walk in, in his ways and acknowledge him, etc., and he will direct us but to grasp the understanding that we can't merit it, that we can't get good enough or do enough. God did it. God paid the price. Our prayer then turns into one of thanksgiving. And when we grasp that truth, we will understand of who God is in our lives, how important he is in our lives. The focus is taken off of us and what we are trying to do. And it's placed on Jesus and what he has already done. Grace is undeserved favor. We can't merit it. Now, mercy is the act of withholding deserved punishment. Right? You got that? But grace is the act of endowing unmerited favor. It is ours. We can have it because we believe it. Hebrews 4, the 16th verse says, Boldly, fearlessly, let us therefore come unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace or favor in our time of need. So if you don't believe you have it, then stand on that verse and make it yours and claim that you do have it because Christ gives it to you. You didn't earn it. Grace is also the only thing against which the devil has no defense. Did you get that? He can't deal with it. He can't understand or comprehend the grace of God. So when we get that understanding and that comprehension and realize what God's grace means, what God's favor means in our life, he flees. He can't cope with that. And if you're living by your own self-effort and you're constantly in your pride, are saying, well, I did this, God, and I did this, or you might even say it to your fellow Christian friends, whatever, that's of your own merit. It means nothing. But what God did for us, that's what means something. By learning to thank him and to pray those scriptures of what he has done for us and incorporate that into our prayer life, 
and realizing we can't do anything like what God has already done and to make it our prayer of thanksgiving because our self-efforts will just go poof. They will have little meaning. This, when, when we understand that, we take dominion over the enemy rather than the other way around. This, when we don't understand it, gives the enemy the upper hand. So when we grasp that truth, we take dominion, which is ours, over the enemy. Remember also that the devil is a master accuser and manipulator, and he'll try to give you powers of suggestion and mess up your thoughts and, and, make, and, and bring those things up. You know, well, hmm, you re remember what you did back there? And then you start feeling bad or, or you messed up in, in any area of your life, and then you start to think, well, I'm not good enough. I No, those are lies. And you can speak directly to those lies. Very often, especially fear is a huge one. And I will speak directly to it. And I will say, fear, you're a liar. That is not what the Bible tells me. You are a liar and you go in Jesus' name. And he does. Because he recognizes that you recognize what you already have in Christ. So we don't have to worry about his accusations. We just point to Jesus' blood. And when we are accused by something we may have done, we can refer to, Christ died for my sins. It is a continual cleansing of my sins. Jesus will never leave me nor forsake me. He is always working on my behalf. He cares about me. He has cleansed me and washes me regularly. I thank him for that. Because of that, I understand my position in Christ. I understand that when God looks at me, he sees Christ's blood over me. He sees that protection. He sees that Christ in his righteousness dwells in my spirit that I am holy and acceptable in his sight, not because I did something, but because Christ did it for me. When you understand that, you will grow in your understanding of many other things that I have talked about or that you may want, that we've talked about on various videos that you really want in your life. Understand that it is not you cannot merit it. It is not your favor that you have accomplished this. It is because of God's favor on your life. And that is why we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We don't have to whimper and say, but God, I know I did this and I really messed up and I'm really sorry, etc. Yes, God, God knows that we are repentant and he sees our heart. But we can thank him that God, even though I messed up, I know that I walk in your grace, in your favor, not because I deserve it, but because of what Jesus did for me. Thank you for listening today to Praying for Miracles with Carol. I love it when you send me your, your questions, your emails, and of course your comments. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you soon.